Good day, students. I am Dr. Monica Khetarpal. I am Associate Professor of Physics in Government Dungar College, Bikaner. In my lecture series today, I am going to deliver a lecture of MSc Final Physics. Today, I will discuss single particle tunneling. For this purpose, I am taking two metals. Here, I have shown my two metals by A and B and these two metals are separated by an insulator C. This insulator as we know act as a barrier to the flow of electrons. In metals electrons can easily flow but between these two metals there is a barrier. If we consider this barrier C to be very thin order to be of the order of 10 or 20 angstrom, then there is a probability that electron can pass from one metal A to B through C and similarly an electron can pass from B to A. This process is termed as tunneling. So tunneling will occur only when this insulating layer is very thin. What is this insulating layer? In many experiment it has been found that the insulating layer is simply a thin oxide layer which is formed on one of the met one of two evaporated metals. Now tunneling can occur from one metal to another. Similarly what Josephson observed, he took these A and B as superconductors and insulator being the same. Now, what I am taking, that tunneling process is occurring of superconducting electrons from one superconductor through a layer of insulator into an another superconductor. This process is termed as Josephson superconducting tunneling. There are two types of Josephson effect. First is the DC Josephson effect and another being AC Josephson effect. What is DC Josephson effect? Here I have two superconductors separated by an insulator. A DC current will flow across the junction in absence of any electric or magnetic field. This is DC Josephson effect. Now, what is AC Josephson effect? If we apply a DC voltage across the junction, this junction, then we will find that output current is oscillatory. That means output current is AC in nature. This is AC Josephson effect. This AC Josephson effect, it has been utilized for the determination of value of H cross upon E. Today we will discuss in detail DC Josephson effect. As I have said, what is DC Josephson effect? Here we will have simply two super, uh, superconductors which will be separating by, separated by an insulating layer. Now I am taking that let psi1 is the probability amplitude of electron pair on first side of the junction. And similarly, psi2 is the probability of amplitude of electron pair on the other side. That means these are the probability amplitude of electron pair on A side and this is for B side. In DC Josephson effect, there is no external voltage applied. So we have both are at zero potential and we are also assuming that both superconductors to be identical. Now what I am writing time dependent Schrodinger equation. 
I will apply this time dependent Schrodinger equations to first and second superconductor. Schrodinger equation is I H cross del psi upon del T is equal to H psi. Psi is wave function. H is energy. For my first junction, I will have this expression as I H cross del psi 1 by del T as I have taken probability amplitude on one side to be psi 1. So I have replaced psi by psi 1. Capital H, this is Hamiltonian energy. Energy means H cross omega. Here I am writing it H cross T. T is termed as transfer interaction across the insulator. It has the dimensions of frequency. And interaction of first junction is with second junction. So I am writing this expression for first. So interaction is with second junction. So instead of psi, I am writing psi 2. Similar expression for the second junction will be iota h cross del psi 2 upon del t equal to h cross t psi 1. Now, if this insulating layer, it is very thick, then there will be no interaction of first superconductor with second and similarly that of second with first. So in this case, T will be equal to zero. Now, to solve this expression, I am taking psi one as n one half e raised to power iota theta one and similarly psi two to be n two half e raised to power iota theta two. Since from first expression, I know my del psi 1 by del 2. Another del psi 1 by del 2 can be determined by differentiating equation 3. So from first expression, del psi 1 by del 2, h cross cancels. This is equal to T upon I iota psi 2. And from this, I'm differentiating psi 1 with respect to T. I get half n1 differentiating n1 half n1 minus half dn1 by dt e factor as it is plus another term n1 half as it is and differential of e raised to power iota theta 1 to be iota e raised to power iota theta 1 d theta 1 upon dt. In this expression, I have substituted the value of psi 2 from fourth expression. So here I got del psi 1 upon del t. Similarly, I can have my value of, similarly I can have a value of del psi 2 upon del t. Differentiating with respect to t. First of all, I am differentiating n2 with respect to t. I get half n2 minus half and differential of n2 with t is dn2 by dt, e raised to power iota theta 2. And differential of exponential term, this is iota e raised to power iota theta 2, d theta 2 upon dt, n2 half as it is. And from this expression, I have value of d, d psi 2 upon dt to be equal to T upon I psi 1. I have substituted the value of psi 1 from expression 3. So I have my values of del psi 1 upon del T, del psi 2 upon del T. Now, in order to solve these two expressions, I am multiplying fifth equation by a factor of n1 half e raised to power minus iota theta 1. Multiplying this, this term cancels. I get half dn1 by dt. And from here, iota n1 d theta 1 by dt. 
here i have a term e raised to power iota theta 2 now multiplying this by this term e raised to power minus iota theta 1 appears and i am substituting theta 2 minus theta 1 to be equal to delta so i got the term minus iota t n1 n2 half in spite of e raised to power iota delta i am expressing as cos and sine cos delta plus iota sine delta this was for amplitude psi 1 similarly another expression can be multiplied that is equation 6 can be multiplied by a factor n2 half e raised to power iota theta 2 and for this i will get my expression 8 now we can see that here are the terms some of the terms are real and some of the terms are imaginary because there is a factor iota in this expression so we can easily separate out our real and imaginary parts first of all separating real part of equation 7 i got the expression dn1 by dt is equal to 2t and 1 and 2 raised to the power half sine delta separating my imaginary part i get d theta 1 by dt to be equal to minus t n2 by n1 half cos delta similarly equation 8 can be solved by separating real and imaginary parts i got these two terms now since i have taken my superconductors to be identical so i can have n1 approximately equal to n2 if n1 and n2 are approximately equal we can clearly see from these two equation equation of d theta 1 by dt and equation of d theta by 2 by dt that they are equal and from the relation of variation of n1 and n2 with t by putting them to be approximately same we get dn2 by dt equal to minus dn1 by dt these expressions show that current flow through the junction and it is found to proportional to dn2 by dt or dn1 by dt what does this means that if there are electrons moving from first junction then they will add up in the <coughs> second junction and from this expression i get d by dt theta 2 minus theta 1 that means d delta by dt equal to 0 that means phase difference is equal to delta so the current depend upon the phase difference by a factor j equal to j0 sine delta and what is delta theta 2 minus theta 1 here j0 is the maximum zero voltage current that can flow across the junction here i have drawn the graph between current and voltage since applied voltage is zero the current can be plus j0 or minus j0 this will depend upon the value of phase difference theta 2 minus theta 1. So from here it is clearly, clearly evident that in absence of any external applied voltage or we can say any electric or magnetic field we can have in an output current equal to plus J0 or minus J0. This is DC Josephson effect. In my next lecture, we will see what is AC Josephson effect. Thank you students for watching.